Hi everyone, I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to the fishing scene. Hey folks, there are many lakes around the upper Midwest that are shallow bodies of water, as we're on today, that only top out at about 15 feet maximum depth, but they can also hold lots and lots of diversity. You can catch walleyes on these lakes, northern pike, muskies, perch, uh, bass, crappies, sunfish, bullheads. I mean, they really hold a wide variety of fish. But here's the key, most of the time, these lakes like this don't have any real deep holes, don't have much structure. So then what you want to do is, you want they, they will definitely relate to certain types of weed situations. And what we're working today is we're working these pencil reeds. These pencil reeds tell me a couple things. One, with the reeds like that, they're going to attract bait fish. Because inside those pencil reeds is other types of vegetation, some grass, things like that. Also, it means it's a hard bottom. You see those pencil reeds like that? That means it's a hard bottom. Might even be some rocks, some gravel. We know for sure there's going to be some kind of a hard type of bottom, maybe even some sand. Also, it holds a lot of fish. And you'll find a wide variety of those fish. The key is, is to try to work those areas of, the, of those pencil reeds where there's some wind blowing into. That usually works out the best. And what we're doing though, those reeds are sitting up in about six feet of water. That's all, they're very, very shallow water. We're out here in, in the summertime now, and you're thinking, well, gosh, I, I, I can't be fishing for walleyes out in, in, in uh, six feet of water in the middle of the summertime. Well, on this lake, and many lakes around, you don't have a choice. 15 feet is as deep as they get, but there's really nothing out there. They'll cruise out around there, but they're gonna be in here, they got some shade, they got some feed, and we're gonna see if we can't get ourselves some fish. So what we're doing, I'm using a Lindy veggie jig, and it's made just for this type of situation. A veggie jig, it's a, it's a jig, it's a very narrow, slender jig head, and then as you can see, it's got these wires here. There's seven real light gauge wire strands that act as a protection. And you can bend them up or bend them down depending on how much weed protection you want. And then I'm using a Berkley Power Shad no live bait. And we're just pitching it out there, pitching it out up towards those reeds. And you can actually pitch right into those pencil reeds or you can pitch to the outside edge or you'll see there's little pockets there's some thicker areas, there's some little pockets, and I'll try to hit for some of those pockets back in there, and you never know what you're gonna catch. Like I said, it's, it's a lot of fun to fish this way because every time you cast out and you get a fish on, you never know what it's gonna be. Let that jig sink to the bottom. Again, it won't take long because we're, you know, those pencil reeds are sitting up in about six foot of water. And then just kind of work it real slow back to the boat. And don't, you know, you get 10, 12 feet from the boat and say, well, no more fish. I'm going to bring it in. Work it all the way back. Because a lot of these shallow water lakes, like the one we're on today, they're not very clear. you got a lot of turbulence, especially if you've had some wind. And uh, those fish aren't going to get as spooked as in a clear water lake. So work that jig all the way back. Oh, there's a fish. Boy. Oh, man. It feels like an eye. It's lunkered down in there. This is a nice fish. Tighten up my drag just a tad. One thing, they'll, they'll brown nose you, folks. They'll get you right down in those weeds. And when they do, just put pressure on your rod and just easily work them up. Boy. There's, oh, that's a dandy. That's a dandy. Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah. No, there's a walleye, folks. I'm, oh, I can't even lift the, hardly lift the net. Oh, boy, that is a dandy walleye. I'm telling you, look at that, baby. Uh-huh, look at that. She got some vegetation on the jig and everything. She was right down there in them weeds. Oh, come on, I can get my pliers. This is those kind of fish, folks, that you wanna maybe 
Take a quick picture, but we're not going to do that because we got it on camera. And, uh, oh, look at that, huh? What a dandy of a walleye, folks, out of six feet of water in the summertime. Uh-huh. 24 and a half inches. What a dandy. She's fat. We'll get her back in the water here. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. And sometimes you got to work them a little bit. Come on, baby. Come on, girl. There she goes. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks. Hey, <laughs> we're, we're working these shallow water lakes. There's plenty of them around the upper Midwest here. And we're just working these pencil reeds. Six feet of water in the summertime. Oh, nice crappie. Nice crop. Huh? I'm going to, I don't want to lose that one. I should probably got the net because that's a, oh, come here, buddy. Yeah, look at that, huh? Nice black crappie. What a dandy. That'll go about a pound. Not super big, but nice, nice crappie. Oh, look at that. Took that veggie jig, got him hooked quick. Got him hooked good, I should say. And I'm using that Berkeley two and a half, three inch power shad. Isn't that a nice crappie? Folks, we're catching these right up six foot of water up in the reeds. We don't know what we're gonna catch today, but that's the diversity. Let me, let's get this gal back in the water here. Go on there, buddy. There he goes. There he goes, no harm done. That's the diversity about fishing these kind of lakes. Now, a lot of people think, okay, here we are, we're, you know, right now we're out here in early June, that, okay, maybe you got part of May and you got maybe part of June, and then once uh, July gets here, these, these lakes, they're impossible to fish because they get so weedy. Well, they do get pretty weedy, but a lot of these lakes aren't very really clear, so you won't get the real thick vegetation like you would on some of the clear lakes. And the, the weed lines on a lake like this won't go much past seven, maybe eight feet at the most. So if it's really windy, I'll still work these, these reeds like this in July, but I might work a little bit further out in a little bit deeper water. But on a windy day, they'll be right up in that stuff, just like they are today, even though it's not totally windy. In fact, speaking of that, let's talk about conditions that are going on here right now, right here today. We got a wind out of the southeast, not much. It's about, uh, I would say, under 10 miles an hour, five to 10 miles an hour at most. Air temperature is sitting at uh, about 65 to 70 degrees. Water temperature is 65 degrees. And water clarity, very, very minimal. In fact, as I'm looking down in the water, I would say about two and a half, three feet at max. So that's why another reason that these, some of these fish are up here. Walleyes, of course, don't like that sunlight. There's not much wind. We do have some cloud cover out here today, so that's helping a little bit, but the sun is poking through every once in a while. But with this water clarity as little as it is, those walleyes don't mind being up in this shallower water. And plus, in those reeds, they do get a little bit of, uh, of uh, protection from the sunlight. So we're gonna rearrange here. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna show you how you, how you how you do this. Now when you buy these veggie jigs like this from Lindy Little Joe Tackle Company, they come with those seven wire guard up like that. So that's okay for now. And then what, what you do is you take that power shad or a, or a minnow or a leech or whatever you want to use, but we're using artificials today. And you just run that down there like this. I'm going down about oh, a half an inch. Bring it out the top and then these jigs have a little neck on them here with a little collar so that plastic doesn't slide down. You just bring it up against that head there. And then, there you got what looks like a minnow. Then what I like to do is take that seven strand wire guard and push it down, hold it down a little bit so it comes up just above that hook. That way, the fish won't feel it as much. And you can see how easy it goes down. It's very, very subtle. And if the fish, should, they won't drop it because of that. And now you're set to go. And pitch her back out there. And these fish aren't getting hard. And again, a lot of the times, you're, you're gonna think you're snagged up on a weed. Many, many times you'll think, ah, oh, it's just a weed. But you know what? If, again, you wanna pull on that, if you feel any little bit of movement at all, set the hook. Or if you see that line starting to go side to side a little bit, then you know it's a fish.
What I like to do is I pop it out there, and then I'm just going to let it sit. Just for a moment. I'll start popping it a little bit and catch up with my line. Now, the more wind there is, the more bow you're going to get in your line. I'm using six pound Berkeley Trilene XL. I really like that line. It casts well, and that's what we're doing. We're casting quite a ways because it's so shallow. We, won't, we don't want to spook those fish. And then I'm just lifting and letting it fall back. And then I'm reeling up that slack line, lifting again, letting it fall back. Now, most of the time, those fish are going to take it when it falls back. So you lift it up, that jig falls back to the bottom, and when you go to lift it up, that's when you think you'll feel so, like that. It doesn't feel near as big as that crappie did, but who knows, who knows what it will be. Might be a bullhead. You'll catch plenty of those out in lakes like this. Too. Oh, it looks like a jumbo perch. There he comes. Hey, you know, like I said, you're not, you never know what you're gonna catch. Perch, related to the walleye, pretty thing, aren't they? Look at those pickle fins underneath there, a nice orange color like that. Huh? Nice, nice little perch. Well, I tell you, if you're gonna, you know, keep some fish for eating, this, uh, this wouldn't be too bad. I know when my dad was alive, boy, he was the perch king. In fact, that walleye we caught earlier on the show, he, he would have thought that was a rough fish. Hey, catch up with that line. <laughs> oh, jeepers, did we get off? No, nope, no. Nope. Can't tell what it is. It's kind of twirling like a pike, though. Kind of twirling like a pikey. Don't see him yet. That's one thing is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Little pike. Little pike. Come here, boy. Come here, buddy. Little pike. Hey, that's one thing, folks. You'll catch a lot of these on lakes like this, and a lot of times they're not much bigger than this one. Every once in a while, though, you'll get a big. Well, he's thinking he's a bass there now. Little pike, go back down there. And uh, get a little bit bigger, okay? Yeah, a little skinny guy. And you can tell, you know, people, a lot of people say, Dick, how do we never use leaders? Well, I do use leaders on occasion if I'm fishing just for like big northern pike or of course muskies. But otherwise, when I'm fishing like this, walleye fishing, or like today, we're just out here seeing what we can get off these pencil reeds for everybody to, to, to see directly to the jig or whatever type of lure that you're using. And don't use real heavy tests. Six pound tests, eight pound tests at max is what I'll use, but I really like six pound. It's light enough where you can fish some of these real clear lakes for even crappie, sunfish, and yet it's, it's good, hard, tough line that you can, you know, as long as you don't horse them out of these weed beds, you'll be just fine. But the key is, is to buy good quality name brand line. Like I use, I use the Berkeley Trilene XL. I really like that. The XL stands for extra length, so it casts a long, long way. So that's really kind of nice. You see if that uh, northern did much damage to Nope, you can still still use that uh, that Berkeley Power Shad that I got on there. If they start getting really beat up, then you're definitely going to want to put on another one. Work that jig real slow. Okay, I feel something kind of holding on. Ooh, nice. This feels like a pretty nice fish. It's got me down that grass. Again, get you in that grass on the, you know, he's not up in those reeds anymore, but there's some grass down there. He's got his snout in. And just kind of put steady pressure when you feel him come loose and catch, oh, there he is. Oh, it's a little northern pike again. He must have got down those, that grass on me and it felt, felt like a lot nicer fish. But, you know, he's a small one, but uh, hey, moms and dads and hey, the kids and myself, I'll tell you, they're fun to catch. Anytime you got something on the end of that rod, you can't complain. And again, it's just showing the diversity that we have in many of our area lakes. Little, little pike, but he'll get bigger. Actually, pike are a good thing to have in the lake. They take care of a lot of the 
smaller panfish and they keep them from getting all uh, you know stunted and what have you but those pike they'll, they'll get bigger bigger if you let them get bigger but again we're not doing anything uh, out of the ordinary just flipping jigs up in there in that shallow water in those reeds and just working it back real real slow and you just you don't know what you're going to get and that's the fun part about it get casted back out there There we go. Ooh, that feels like a pretty good fish. Come on, boy. Ooh, it's a bass. It's a bass. You see that? That bass came right up there. And... All right. He's dogging me downstairs now. Now, when they, when they jump like that, you want to catch up with your line and keep a tight line, because when those bass jump, that's when you lose them. That slack line gets in there. Oh, he's a good little fighter. Oh yeah, nice little bass. Come here, buddy. Come on. There we go. Uh, and you can lip bass. They they just have little nubbins of teeth, so they won't they won't hurt you. Oh, uh huh. Nice fish. Crappie. Nice crop. Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah. No, that's a dandy crappie, folks. That's a dandy crappie. Wow, what a diversity we've got today, huh? Oh, come here. I don't want to lose them. There we go. Oh, look at that crappie. Holy cow. Ah, what a dandy. I'm going to measure that one. That looks, that's going to be, that's probably a pound and a half crappie, I'll bet. Maybe even bigger. 14 inch crappie, huh? Wow, nice fish. Come on there, buddy. There she goes, there she goes. I can tell when I when I set the hook on that baby. Whoa, she's dogging. This is a nice fish, folks. This is a nice fish. I'm telling you, I can just tell she's dogging right down on the bottom. There, she's starting to come up a little bit. Oh, come. nice eye. I can see it. Nice eye. I'm gonna get the net on this one. Come here, baby. Oh, oh, look at that. She got down the weaves there on me. Oh. Come here, baby. Oh, hi, folks. Look at that. Another nice eye. Oh, look at that. I'm telling you, weed walleyes, six feet of water, fish these shallow water lakes. They're all over the upper Midwest. And I'll tell you what, folks, you're going to catch walleyes and bass and northerns and crappies. Let me see if I can get the hook out of her mouth. Just like this baby, huh? What a, what a lunker. Hey, huh? Look at that. Hey, folks. Please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beardsley. Thanks for joining me today on The Fishing Scene. 